Hey guys, Tammy Treyer, treyerwilderness.com, and you'll also find us at treyerwildernessacademy.com. I'm going to wait a few minutes here and see if I can get a bunch of you on here. I'm going to do a little bit of Q&A and uh, share what we've got going on here, our progress, and hopefully give you guys a little bit of inspiration. How are you guys doing out there? It is a glorious day here in northern Idaho. I believe it's going to be a hot one. It's been an interesting morning so far. I'll have to share that then. Uh, I see a bunch of people jumping on. Good morning, good morning. Where are you guys from? And how are you guys doing today? Good morning, Tammy. <laughs> okay, it has been an absolutely crazy morning so far today. Um, I took the dogs out for a walk. I was in the middle of recording a podcast. Um, always have one earbud out and the other one in while I'm recording. It's just nice to record on my walks. And all of a sudden, everything just let loose. Uh, there's a particular spot in our woods. This has happened to me. This is the third time uh, over the last three years. It's not something that constantly occurs. But good morning, Krista. Hey, it's good to see you. <laughs> I'm glad to have you joining me. Um, I'm walking along the lane, and all of a sudden, there's a coyote really close trying to call the dogs in. And I've got all four dogs. I'm by myself. So I real quick pocketed my iPhone while I was recording and grabbed my gun because the, it's either a young wolf or a, a coyote. Um, previously there was a young wolf that did the same thing, but you know animals were once skittish and when they'd hear a human voice they would go the other direction. Well this is the third time that the stupid thing came into my voice and I don't know if it's the same one or not. But it was yipping and trying to get the dogs lured in, so once they're in there, it's like game on, and it's it's pretty thick forest where I was. So I had three of the dogs right there with me. The other one was in question, and I just grabbed my three fifty seven and let a shot off and finally went. But, I mean, I was yelling and everything else, and it just kept coming in closer. That just aggravates me. Um, you do need to be careful out there, guys. We're just in a spot where there's wolves. Coyotes are typically harmless. You know, they'll go the other direction. But with having four dogs, one person, you know, they're not leashed. We're out in the wilderness. We're just going for a walk. So, you know, you got to be careful. And it, w wasting a bullet was much better than worrying about one of my dogs getting tangled with a coyote or a pack because they typically lure them in and then there's a bunch of them in there. So, anyway, the shot retreated it and or it retreated to the shot. But I hope you guys are doing good today. It is crazy here in northern Idaho. Um, for those of you that follow the Facebook page itself, you know that the mountain man and I were considering waving the white flag on Monday. Usually when um, one of us is down, the other is up, which is good because then we can keep, you know, the other that's in a better spot can improve the other. Well, that wasn't the case. We were both in just such a low place. We've got so much on our plate, so much to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish six months worth of work in a two month period and still work while we're doing this. So it's been pretty insane. Um, but I feel that those are, it is, it's beautiful here, Krista. <laughs> um, but I think when we go through those spots, those are the true growth areas. I don't get to those spots very often. Once maybe every two months or once a month, you know, it's really rare that I get in that mode where I can't get myself out of it. And despite all my efforts of trying to get into a better place, I just couldn't do it. And it was driving me nuts. But at the same time, like I said, I feel that's a spot where you're really growing, you're persevering, and you're transforming. And that was the case. I am going to try to spin this around and show you what we've got going on. I'm using a different selfie stick that is not really kind, but bear with me here. Okay, there we go. That is our guest cabin, and you can see the cluster of trees laying all over the place and that have been felled. We have a lot of dead timber right now. Um, we had really, really dry, then really, really wet, and a beetle infestation got in here and started killing off all the white pines. So rather than waste them, we are utilizing them, and I'm going to show you what we're doing. But people have asked, are you, you know, you're, you're selling your house, you're going to rebuild, where are you going? We're staying in Idaho. Um, I know Krista would love us to return to Pennsylvania and many others, but 
it's just not in our radar. It is just so awesome out here. I just couldn't. I, I we both really love Idaho. Good morning, Cindy. <laughs> exactly, one day at a time, Cindy. Um, and that's what you got to do. And that's the funny thing. That's what we're going to talk about today. My friend Bree over at uh, BettyRocker.com shared with me. I'm going to spin this back around. I uh, shared an email this morning, and it said, um, "All or something." not all or nothing. And that's so true. Every step, you know, we're always going to, you know, we have the idea of getting in a good workout routine and then you get sick or something happens and everything goes to crap in a handbasket. Well, if you keep taking those baby steps, you'll get back on track and you won't get off track too far. And that's a key thing. As long as we're doing something and moving in a forward motion, that is the most important thing. <laughs> I know we miss you too. <laughs> you guys have to come visit Krista. Behind me here, that is our home. There's probably confusion as to what we live in. Uh, Mountain Ben is living in the cabin that I just showed you. This is our home. And you will be seeing more of that um, as we progress here. But I'm going to spin things around and take you for a walk. I'm trying to do this slowly so that I don't make everybody motion sick. But um, I want to show you what we've got going on, what we are doing in our every ounce of spare time. But guys, the key thing, the key thing is to um, keep moving forward. Keep looking up also, guys. I can't express that enough, and I can't say, uh, I just can't imagine what my life would be like right now and in the different journeys we've gone through and the different parts of life I've experienced that have not been pleasant, you know, what my life would be if I didn't have God in it. And leaning into Him and pulling into Him for strength is like such a huge resource for us. And it is very powerful, very empowering. I'm just waiting for one of the dogs to knock my feet out from under me. <laughs> that would look cute. Okay. So, reading my Bible, doing devotions, and just really being in tune with, with God is so incredibly important. And I put links in the description below for the inspired journaling Bible I use, as well as the devotional that is so amazing. I'll share more on that in a second going to share this with you. Krista will appreciate this. Um, the mountain man is, he's got a tremendous mind, very mechanical mindset. This was a very narrow horse trailer, very short horse trailer. He expanded the axle width on it so that he could fit a four-wheeler on it. And so this has been a welding project. There will be a YouTube video on this. Um, he's got it all hooked up. He's, like I said, got an amazing mind. So he's got a winch attached there to a piece that can be removed down there. And he uses that to hook onto the logs. And it actually pulls the logs up and onto the trailer. So our backhoe is down right now. Uh, we did get a new part. We did get it in. It's still not running. Well, it's running really nicely. All the buckets work, but it won't move. It's hydrostatic, and we are working on that to get that going. But in the meantime, you got all those logs down there that I just showed you that need to come up to this, to this mill. And if you're not resourceful, um, you kind of just sit in a standstill, but thankfully the man has been working on this for um, about a month in his spare time, maybe a little more, um, so that he'd have something for foraging our firewood this, this year. Uh, we get out in the woods as often as we can to get the firewood we need, but right now our focus is getting uh, lumber milled. So you can see here that he's got some logs there. The mill is under tarp right now, and rather than uncover it, I will show you that another time. There's also a video and some photos going out that you'll get a look at this, but he built the sawmill also, guys. Um, 2013, uh, we built, was it 2012? Uh, I think it's 2013, early 2013. He built the sawmill. We built the stilted tree house, which then turned into a barn for our milk goats. He also built our chicken coop, 
from all milled lumber and we used it to do both the barn and the chicken coop to work the bugs out of it so that we could then use it for the cabin. Now the cabin, mind you, um, we had guests planning to come and stay in it and because of um, a couple bugs and moving the sawmill from here to down there, we had some leveling issues and it ended up that we had four and a half weeks to build that cabin. We dropped the trees, we milled the lumber, uh, did it all traditionally. We were putting the porch on the front and the door on, the guys were, while my mother-in-law and I ran to the airport to get our guests and they were shoveling out the dirt. When we got back, we swept it up, cleaned it up, put furniture in it and called it good. So nothing like last minute and to the wire, but it was just the way things worked out. So. We are known to do things in a fast pace and to get her done, but this is a lot of work and um, we're just going to keep you along on the journey. The thing is, is if you can just keep moving forward one day at a time, that is just totally key. Okay, I'm going to spin this around. Oh, by the way, this is the Mountain Boys accommodations. He purchased that last fall and he's got himself a solar panel. I don't know if you can see it. You should be able to see it right there on a pivoting uh, unit that he has to power that. He is actually counseling at camp this week so he is not here. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna spin this. Okay, now I want to show you my dinner. It's, it's cooking. I love having resources like this and being able to utilize our sun is so important for us, especially in our busy days. I'm going to just flip this now. Okay. This here is the Solivore Sport. It is a sun oven. I like this one um, because it is rectangular so I can fit, I'm going to have to pop this, give me a second. But you can see it's steaming. I have got gonna pop there we go there is my wild turkey with a um, little bit of water and bacon grease in there I've got it all seasoned up with some onions and that is baking at 200 right now in the Sun and um, low heat slow long cooking so that will be in all day but you can see that my nine sorry my 9 by 13 pan fits in there really nice so I like this for making things like turkey because it wouldn't fit in my all-american uh, just because the turkeys are large and I've got a leg and a, a half a breast in there as well as the gizzard so I'm gonna put the lid back on here so bear with me I'm gonna flip this around and all that there we go let me pop these back on there but using a sun oven is so awesome it's like using a slow cooker I do also like to use um, the All-American Sun Oven. Um, the benefit of that one is that you can stack in it. So I can stack my potatoes and my meat and I can put a canning jar of carrots down the side. I can also put canning jars of things in here, um, but this one you can't stack in it. But I can do my baked goods. So the other day I had uh, brownies and um, almond flour brownies baking in the solivore and I had our meal um, scallop potatoes cooking this last one's fighting with me there we go got it um, scallop potatoes cooking in the all-american sun oven um, and then I did pork on the grill uh, it, it smells wonderful when you open it up. The guys, it was really funny. I was checking. They were milling the day that I had the scalloped potatoes on, and I opened it just to see how they were doing and if I needed to reposition them. And they both were, like, turning around trying to figure out what they were smelling. I thought it was great. I tantalized them and teased them all day long while the food's cooking. I guess that's not really nice, but it was funny. <laughs> so anyway, you know, utilizing your resources, um enabling me to have a meal going all day long while I'm inside doing other things. I don't know if you notice I have a wash line full of wash up there at the house. I'm still trying to sort through things and get things out of the house so the guys can start working in the house. I'm gonna flip this and show you this also. This my friends is what these guys have been busy doing. We've got two by sixes, a real two by six, um, which is actually two inches by six inches. If you buy lumber in the in the store it's certainly not that and uh, two by fours and then we also have 
um, varying wood that will be decorating our home that's going to look just amazing. I can't wait. Um, it'll look amazing for the next owner. <laughs> But that's what they've been busy doing. So, you know, your raw product of the timber on the mill and your end product. So, uh, we got a lot of lumber to mill. The other question was, um, have we moved yet? No. Um, we are still on our homestead. We are finishing the inside. I am trying to get, good morning, Deborah. I am trying to get everything out of the house. I have. I'm simplifying to such a degree. It's actually become an addiction. I do not want to have anything in my home unless it's something that we ha we have to have and that we ha we need to to function. Everything else is going, and it feels so so good. We had a yard sale on the Fourth of July that we uh, did very well at, and. Um, I'm just continuing to simplify, which feels awesome. So my job is to get everything out of the house so that they can work in there and not have to worry about things being in the way. The other thing is, you know, we'll probably be, you know, have a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen in there that we'll be utilizing, but the rest of it will be um, out of the way. That way they can finish the interior cosmetic stuff. We can't do anything um, anywhere else until we sell this because um, we would we would essentially be building you know from the ground up we're going to be using all the lumber that we mill but we don't have money for doors and windows and the tin for the roof so um, we'd have to sell in order to do that we are also not moving far um, we were given the opportunity to um, put up a little structure on a neighboring property and as long as that doesn't sell um, along with this um, that's that's what we're planning to do. However, if that were to sell, um, we would be probably purchasing a camper of sorts to live in for the winter. Uh, there's a lot of chickens or eggs before the chicken or chicken before the eggs, and um, it could make it nerving. But we're just rolling with it. You know, that's all we can do. So one day at a time, uh, one foot forward. It was just one of those weird days on Monday. It was just so much negativity and and things out of our control and just you know so much to do and not enough time to do it in it just sort of started to weigh on on both of us but I feel God moving God is opening doors and God is making things happen and um, the biggest and most important thing for us is to listening to where he's taking us and guiding us so while you guys are watching what are some questions you guys might have for us um, and do any of you use the sun oven, and if so, what for? I've used it to dehydrate already. Um, you can also dry clothing in it if you want to. You know, put them out on um, the uh, cookie rack type uh, pieces inside the uh, sun ovens, and and you can dry them in the sun. But dehydrating is a really nice thing to utilize them for as well. Do a lot of cooking and baking. I've made breads. And you can find a lot of videos on the Sun Oven Cooking on our YouTube channel. You can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash YouTube. But the links, I have a bunch of links in the description below. And, you know, we want to be transparent through this. So that's why I posted on Monday that we were having a bad day because... I always wear a smile and I always try to be happy and view life very positively. So when I get in those negative mindsets, I kind of pull into myself. I don't really communicate with people because I don't want to share my misery. It's, it's really bothersome to me. Um, I'd rather just work through it and, and not affect anybody else. Although I have some great prayer warriors that uh, were lifting me up throughout the day. But I wanted you guys to know that you know we're no less human than the rest of you. Uh, we have bad days. We have bad moments. Things break. Things happen. And you know that we're going through a tough spot. But it's like everything else. It's all how you view it. It's all perspective. And like I've said before, we're all going to go through tough times. It's it's how you perceive them. It's if you want to stay stuck in them or whine and complain about them or actually be interactive and do something to move yourself forward and out of the situation you're in. And just making an effort to make the best of it is is all we can do. And, and that's true with anything. And that's why we want to be so transparent through this, to try to help other people because we know we're not the only ones walking a, a, a negative journey right now. Um, 
And I'd like to ask that you keep my dear friend Pat in, in your prayers. Uh, he is going through cancer treatments right now and such an amazing man. And, you know, so he's going through a walk too. And there's always going to be somebody else going through a journey. Your journey's still, you know, going to be a hard thing. So don't try to discredit your journey. Don't try to make yourself feel poorly because you feel bad um, when someone else is worse off because it's it's still it's still the hard and you're still having to walk through the hard and part of it is accepting it and 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 then the other part is moving on from it so I just want to encourage you guys you know to keep moving I wanted to share what we've got going on there's a lot going on and um, I'll try to get out here and maybe do some blips here and there through Facebook live of them milling and once we start getting on the inside I will definitely be sharing that you can find us over at um, Patreon where we will be sharing the real nitty-gritty of the inside and that's uh, patreon.com slash Treyer Wilderness. You can find the link below. Ah, thank you, Krista. I really appreciate that. I'm staring at my screen when it's bright out like this. It's hard to read it sometimes. So, you know, we, we want to be inspiring and we want to help other people because one of the biggest things you know that we do is is survival and I have to share this Monday when it was all like really nasty he and I were so ready to throw our packs on our backs we love the outdoors we love the simplicity of the outdoors and it would be no problem for us to just throw our packs on our backs hit the woods and never come back and be perfectly fine out there and the thought was really there on Monday but we didn't do it um, we have to be adults so unfortunately so, but that is something that we will be doing once we get settled through this mess is getting out in the outdoors a heck of a lot more. But the thing is, when you're in a survival situation, you know, heaven forbid it ever happens, you're going to need to be at your best in order to survive, right? Well, why not practice when you're going through these tough moments in your life on learning to endure and to persevere and to be strong and to find your best avenues you know this is this example is a perfect example of learning to survive learning to walk through the tough stuff learning to keep your wits learning to um, breathe and and find solutions even though you know it, you're really in a sucky spot so being able to learn how to handle Life situations will help you to learn how to handle survival situations too. It's really important, guys. And I can't, you know, we can't uh, share that enough with you because, you know, we, we never know what tomorrow's going to bring. I didn't expect to have to shoot my 357 this morning. So, you know, um, you just, you don't know. And every day is a gift. And learning how to cope and learning how to keep yourself in a healthy place through rough journeys is also really important. Your health matters and you know we are going through a really stressful situation but my addiction is walking. I walk every morning five miles with my dogs and then I do other health treatments as well as other exercise and that exercise guys gets your endorphins going, it de-stresses, it's healing, it's healthy, it's detoxing and you do that and you keep yourself in in your sights while you're going through the chaos you know you're also taking care of you and that's important because that's what's going to keep your cup full and when your cup is full you can be a better wife a better mother a better daughter a better friend and the reverse is there for you men you can be a better father uh, a better husband you know when you are keeping your cup full keeping yourself grounded keeping yourself healthy keeping yourself less stressed you are able to be a better person so it's really important when you're going through the chaos to remember that you've got to walk away from it you've got to find a place that gives you peace and joy and there's nothing wrong I mean we are under the gun to produce you know like I said six months worth of work in a two-month period but we still got to take the time to be healthy or you know what's the point in this journey we're just gonna kill ourselves and that's not the direction we're headed or we'll just put our packs on our back and hit the woods um, much safer but like I said I have to be an adult so anyway I just I want to wish you guys a healthy daily walk and um, like I told you before part of that includes God and I couldn't imagine my life 
without him in it. And if you are not used to reading the Bible or you struggle to read the Bible, the link to the Inspire Bible is below. And that is just such a nice, nice Bible. I always felt like when I wrote in my Bibles, I was defacing it, so I never did. But this Bible is, you know, got lines in it and writing and highlighting and coloring and it really speaks to me. And the other thing is there is something very powerful about a good devotional and reading something good every day that inspires you. If you're not one of those people that can find the positive or see the positive in the negative, sometimes you might need help. And Jesus Calling was gifted to me by my dear friend, Rachel. She watches. So if you're watching this, Rachel, thank you very much because she gave me that probably about five years ago. I used it for three to four years in a row, and every time I'd read it, every day, it was like it pertained to my situation. And it wasn't like I was reliving the same year over and over again. It's almost like the words would change. It would, I don't know. It's just a very um, amazing book that was very fitting, and I just love the way Sarah Young writes in it. So I have gifted that book to many people myself, and if you're looking for something like that, I highly encourage you to check that out. You can find it by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Jesus Calling. But we all need the positive in our lives. Sometimes we don't have the abilities to grab our bootstraps and keep going. Sometimes we don't have the people in our lives that are positive influences that we need. So sometimes we need to seek that. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you need to seek something positive, that's a lot better than living in the negative. So... I just wanted to encourage that for you guys today because I couldn't imagine my walk without those things in my life and without that voice and without, you know, I shared a picture of uh, 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 yarrow, a yarrow plant. I, I'm always seeing hearts. Uh, Krista will, <laughs> will attest to that. She went hiking with me one time and was finding hearts all over the place too after that. It's just an amazing thing. That's how God talks to me. I, at least that's what I feel, you know. I'm always finding them, and it's always in those moments when I need them the most. And um, that yarrow plant, the the head of the flower was a perfect heart. And I'll be hiking at a good clip and see those things. It's just my little reminder that, you know, God's there, that life is okay, that it's all going to be okay. So if you're stuck in a bad spot, don't stay stuck there. Uh, you know, the only thing we can do is keep moving forward. If we stay still or go backwards, we're not. nothing's going to happen. So it's like... Uh, Bree said from BettyRocker.com, all or something, not all or nothing. So every day, guys, baby steps and take care of yourselves and be healthy. I'm just going to end this quick with a quick prayer for you guys and we'll keep moving on and doing these every week and, and sharing our process with you. Ah, that's funny. Krista said she just found a heart-shaped rock the other day. I know, isn't it funny? While moving and clearing out, I have this massive box of heart-shaped rocks. And I have a garden out here full of heart-shaped rocks. And, you know, they're heavy and they're cumbersome. But I kind of feel like I need them and I can't part with them. So, <laughs> always think of you when I find them. <laughs> And well, it's funny because my hearts make me, you know, I write on the back of them sometimes as to where I find them. I found a double-shaped, heart-shaped rock one time when the mountain man and I went for a motorcycle ride on my Harley. Um, I was sitting by a river and looked in, and no sooner than I had sat down there, I found it. It was, And it's two. And that just, you know, reminds me of he and I and that we are a unit we're meant to be. And, and then the other ones, you know, I have from different trips and it just makes me smile and I want to be able to use them in a flower garden or maybe uh, embed them in something. So there's ideas floating there. I'm not sure, but I can't quite part with them yet. I'll part with everything else, just not them. <laughs> but I'm going to say a quick prayer here. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Dear Jesus, I just thank you so much for this glorious, beautiful day, for keeping my dog safe this morning, and just thank you for all that you're going to do today for myself and all those listening, and Lord, just bless everyone here. Everyone has a different walk and different struggles and different celebrations. Just be there for them. Wrap your arms around them. Let them feel your presence, and Lord, just help them to grow and to transform because of you in their lives. And if they don't know you, Lord, help them to pull into you and, and 
May I be a light to them. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do for them all and for us. And, and just ask that you keep your hand of safety and healing and your love and mercies on us all. And I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So guys, if you ever are curious about a walk with God and you don't know how to attain it or are have questions, don't ever hesitate to personal message me or email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com if you need prayers. You know, prayers are powerful. Um, we've Many of us have witnessed the amazing powers of prayer and God has um, really worked miracles in my family's life. God diagnosed me of an illness that almost took my life and God directed me to the doctor that was able to help me progress forward. So, you know, I put a lot of trust in him and faith in him and I am greatly trusting him for an amazing outcome of our circumstances right now and that's what we have to do. You know, we need to do the work and, and put our efforts forth, but we have to have faith in him and let him do his works too. And I just want to encourage you. So don't ever hesitate to reach out. I am blessed to have many prayer warriors and I am thankful for them. And um, we are, my prayer warriors and I are very intuitive to each other's needs. We know when the other needs prayer and I think that's an awesome walk. And having friends in Christ is really important. So know that you can reach out if you need an ear. Um, love you too, Krista. So glad you could join me. And guys, I just wish you an awesome, awesome day. I will see you next Wednesday. And as the mood hits me, I may pop on here more often. So if you haven't turned on notifications, you can do that um, on my page here by hitting the more and turn on the notifications. That way you know when I'm live. But if not, you can always catch them on the replay. So guys, have an awesome blessed day. Make it awesome. Make it the best it can be. And it's all or something, right guys?